Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bear Share Show. This is your host, Andre Matoyer, and today we're going to be talking with a dear friend of mine and a dear local friend of mine Aww. who I just love so much. Um, and that is the lovely, charismatic Mr. Jeremy Morse. Jeremy, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Andre. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I love being able to see you. Um, it's been a while during this pandemic, but you are just always so positive and always so happy. And I'm really, really glad that you are on the show with me today. Well, so thanks. thank you for inviting me to be part of it. I appreciate it. Absolutely. What we wanted to talk about today, um, we were talking about this a little bit last week, but we noticed that um, we felt this would be a good topic. And that would be on the idea of toxic masculinity that we see in the community, especially in the bear community. I know that you've been in the bear community a little bit longer than me, so you may have more expertise as to what you've seen over the years. And so I felt like this could be a great topic for us to talk about and dissect and, and get into. Sure thing. I am so. also lots older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but I'm glad you did. No, of me. course. <laughs> I, I, I have to own it. <laughs> well, you look great, and I still love you, though. Well, I love you, too. Um, Thank so you. First of all, we have been friends for a fair bit of time, right? I think and since 2017. Done, yeah, we've, we've 2017, we were doing pool parties and stuff. And then we really started becoming a lot closer when we go-go danced together. Yes, yes. When we, uh, when we both danced over in L.A. at Mega Wolf a couple of summers mm -hmm. ago, actually this very weekend, I think it was for the 4th of mm -hmm. July and we did that yeah. like photo shoot together mm -hmm. at Leo's house, and uh, yeah. and it was like 117 degrees over there that year too. So <laughs> I know, and they don't have the AC like we do. Not so. quite, but yeah. yeah, it was a good time, and it was nice. It was nice to get to know you better. And then we've worked a whole bunch together here in Phoenix, also dancing. So mm -hmm. I miss that. Yeah, I miss that too. And hopefully, we'll be able to dance together some more. So. I hope so too. I'm actually getting ready to fly out tomorrow to go back to LA for my first time dancing since the pandemic. Um, oh, wow. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. So I'm going I'm there. I may have to, I may have to take it a little bit easy uh, so I don't hurt myself, but uh, I'm, be fine. I'm excited about that. So it's kind of a nice day to, to, you know, to talk about some stuff that uh, is important to me. Actually, this is a really good subject. I think actually. I, I 100% agree. And so, you know, being go-go dancers and being in the bear community, we have a lot of topics like, you know, butch queen or like, um, you know, construction worker. So we see that there is a lot of masculine overtones that appear to be uh, in the bear community. Yes. So why do you think there is an over-reliance of masculinity in the bear community? I know it's in pretty much all the gay community as well, but like, why do you think the bear community maybe has it the most where there's like this preference or, you know, this desire for masculinity? Uh, I think, I mean, it's easy to toss out words like, you know, we live in a patriarchal society or, you know, we all been raised in a heteronormative culture. And I think those things have some truth, but I think what deep down really is at the heart of it. And this is just my opinion. Um, I think a lot of gay men just simply feel ashamed of being homosexual um, by the very nature of who we are and what we learn growing up. Uh, the act of, of, you know, making love to another man, it, you know, involves someone having to be insertive and someone else having to be accepting. And as men, you know, we're raised that, you know, we put our, we put our sex organs in things. We don't take them in things. <laughs> gotcha. And I, I think yeah. that's really honestly, for the way I see it and the way I feel about it is, is I just feel that that's kind of at the heart of all of it is, is that because of the way that we're all raised, a lot of what drives, I think, masculine culture is a fear uh, or a uh, a dislike of appearing feminine or appearing possibly gay. I think that's at the heart yes. of a lot of stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of like you don't want to be considered feminine because you don't want to be considered a woman type thing. Right. right? And like that makes you less than somehow. Yes. Right? Yep. Women are not valued as highly as men are. Uh, and we still struggle with that today, even. 
I don't think you're off. Um, I know that it's common for guys, not all guys, but I know it's common for a lot of guys, at least for me and some of the bears that I've talked to, where their first interests um, would be like, well, I like guys who are mask only. Um, you know, how many times have you seen that on dating profiles? Oh, right? gosh, like, too many to count. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I, I think you're right, though. There's some sort of like defense where it's like, well, you know, it's not as gay if it's another guy guy. I don't I mean, it's gay, but it's you know what I mean? It's like it's it's slightly better. Right. Um, because, you know, someone isn't falling prey to being a queen and being feminine and being almost woman. like. Right. Um, yeah. And bears, we have that. Um, already kind of built in where we're not the typical gays. We're more masculine by nature because we're more like just regular guys, you know? Right. So I think that amplifies that masculinity portion because we already kind of are that way, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I I think, and I, I want to say up front also, just so that, you know, I'm clear about who I am and how I feel about this. I am not here to say that masculine is bad or that right. being masculine a is a bad thing because it's not, it, it, you know, for some people, for some, well, I should just say for people, cause you know, this can apply to, to, to people across the gender spectrum. Some people are simply masculine presenting mm -hmm. and others are more feminine. I, I just want to see, to not be treated like being feminine is less than because it really shouldn't be. Correct. And it really isn't. It's just different. So yes. that's just, I, I wanted to get that point out there, you know, to start with, because a lot of stuff that I feel about this kind of may sound like, Oh, well, you're being really judgmental of, of the mask fellas. Cause you're not one. Cause I know I'm not one and I've never been one um, since I was a little boy my parents knew when I was five that I was gay and there was just something about the way that I speak, something about the way mm -hmm. I move, about the way I talk, the words I use, the tone, the inflection, all of these little things yeah. are just inherent to who I am. It's not anything I try to do. It's just how I, how I express myself is easily identifiable as gay and right. and it can also be equated with being somewhat effeminate so well i think that's where the difference is between masculinity and toxic masculinity right is when you're forced to be a version of yourself that you're not so like society may say okay well we prefer men not effeminate men so if you are an effeminate man and you fake being more of a masculine man because you feel like you need to for societal reasons. I think that's when it becomes toxic because you're not being authentic to yourself. That, that, and also the fact of, of the damage that it does to, to people growing up because quite, Absolutely. quite frankly, uh, everyone in this life is going to suffer hurt and trauma at some point. And it's really unfair, I think, for for us to tell boys that they should not cry when they're hurt, that they should not show pain, they should not show their emotions, they should not share their feelings, they should not ask for help, uh, or that they should not even, you know, move freely with their bodies within their own bodies. That they shouldn't dance, yeah. like all the all the things that, again. Uh, you know, can present the appearance of possibly someone thinking that you're gay is what, uh, you know, we, a lot of us were raised that way. We were, you know, being told that big boys don't cry. So stop crying cry. you know, yep. because you're, yep. you don't want to be, you don't want to be a little sissy boy. And this, you know, and that tells the message to you as a kid. Well, it's not okay to express your emotions. But the problem with that, I think is that, there's going to come a point in your life where, where things are going to happen to you, whether it's losing a relationship or losing a job or losing someone important in your life through death or some other form of, of desertion, you know, you are going to come up against some seriously strong emotions and suppressing those emotions 
I don't think is a good thing for anybody. I think what it does is it creates uh, it creates problems for you to be able to connect with other people. Absolutely. And that's where I think we're doing better as a society with, but we're, we still have a little bit of a long way to go. And I've seen this more, what you were just saying, be more prominent in certain cultures too. You know, there's definitely certain communities and populations where some of that more machismo, like masculinity is definitely taught and preferred. Um, True. Being a former teacher, I've worked in various communities with different types of population and we would do activities. Um, I was part of this, this uh, program called like any town or Unitown, depending on the school. Oh yeah. And we'd all, yeah, those were great. And we'd always do an activity with men and women. And we would always ask questions like that. Like we, you know, if you're a guy stand up, if you've ever been told it's not okay to express your feelings or it's not okay to cry. I mean, we're human. We have emotions regardless of gender. Um, we need to find healthy ways to express it. It's not fair to tell men you can't express your feelings. But that all ties in with what we've decided as society, this is what a man should be. And it's therefore toxic because we're forcing you to behave in a way that's not natural. Very true. You know? I, exactly. I, the, the, the man that I was with before my current husband, Tom, his name was Harold. And he mm -hmm. grew up in a household where I, I don't know exactly what his folks said to him. But he was so far in the closet that there wasn't any light getting into him at all. And oh, he could pass for straight, you know. He was one of those people that you could not tell that he was gay in any way, shape, or form because he did not present with anything that would, that would tip you off, you know, until, like, you were actually having sex with him. <laughs> So, well, I want to actually break down what you just what you just said because presenting straight. So there's automatically an assumption that if you're feminine that you're gay, right? And like there's automatically an assumption that if you're presenting masculine that you're straight. We know that to be not true. Um, there's this like what's that British um, talk show host that everyone loves? He just recently hosted Friends. I can't think of his name. Oh, you mean Graham Norton? Um, no, no, the um, because Graham Norton's gay. The one that like <laughs> he recently hosted the Friends reunion. Oh my gosh, he does this car singalongs. Josh Gorbin. Oh, oh yeah. no, uh, uh, yeah. um, James Corden. James, Cor oh my gosh, I messed that up. James <laughs> Gorbin. <laughs> James, Sorry, this James Corden. Corden. C O R. James Corden. Corden. Yes. Yeah. I, clearly, I'm a huge fan. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he he presents himself very kind of effeminate, but he's straight. He's got a wife and people always kind of doubt his sexuality, but he's, he's straight, you know, just he's straight. Yes. Um, and then you've got people that are, you know, masculine who we assume are straight, but they're not. So like we recently had that football player come out of the closet, you know, pretty sh straight and masculine acting, but is gay. So, you know, we've tied this masculinity into gay and straight, but Again, it's it's has nothing to do with it, and the toxicity of how we define it hurts people because they feel like they have to be one or the other. Right, and that's one of the things that's one of the things that was always a, a huge challenge for Harold and I, and it's ultimately what doomed our relationship was the oh. fact of his insistence on on maintaining above all at all costs the appearance of heterosexuality and i'm talking like we couldn't even hold hands in the car because he was afraid someone would drive by in like a i don't know a monster truck and be able to see down into the car and see that two guys were holding hands like th those those crazy kinds of of lengths that he went to um it it made it really difficult to get him to be an open and loving person. And and I tried for many, many years to kind of break how, through how that long stuff. How guys together? Uh, 11 years. And that's a long time. It was, to deal with that. it was. And you know, it was one of those things that, um, 
I had some success with that, but there was also a lot of failure with that because, you know, in the end, if someone is unemotional with you and cannot bring themselves to tell you what they're feeling and just shuts you out repeatedly, it leaves you with the feeling that they just don't care that they're, you know, that there's, there's no, there's no connection there at all. And, and I know that's not true. I know that he did care and love for me, but it, it, there was always this insistence on trying to eliminate or erase any kind of hint that we were gay, which was silly because we lived together in two different states. You don't have roommates after 30 if you're heterosexual. And then there's me who sounds and talks and moves the way I do. And and that would be something that I would be made to feel like I was a threat to his you know, worldview if I spoke too much or if I gestured too much or if I got too excited, you know, and, and, you know, made too much of an exclamation or something, you know, he would, he would get very tense and very upset with me for that. And that's just not fair to, you know, to someone else who's not trying to present in this overly masculine way. Like it, it made me feel like I had to edit myself in a lot of really negative ways. And I gave up dancing because of it, because he just, oh, man. he couldn't handle what it meant. To- well, and so his toxic masculinity of like self-hatred really, because obviously, I mean, you know, he was obviously insecure about all that. Yes. That affected not just him. It started to branch out and affect other people. It affected. Because chances are like, it wasn't just you either, right? Like other people were probably affected. Yeah. His, his, or, or he had very few friends the, he had a friend right. that was a really, really good friend who one night tried to reach out to him and tell him that like he suspected that Harold was gay and he tried to tell him, Hey, you know, I'm okay with gay people. And Harold just couldn't bring himself to, to accept that. And he cut that guy off and rarely talked to him ever again after that. Wow. I mean, it, you know, and he and he didn't have a close relationship with his family because of that. You know, they they weren't close to him. They didn't know who he really was either because he just was so afraid. Now, he made I, himself an island, basically. He kind of did. Because he didn't know how to deal with his his uh, gayness, and he covered for it with masculinity. And basically. and there's a very real reason why. And and this is something that I personally have experienced growing up because I was the kind of boy that that you could tell and still can tell that I'm gay just by looking or listening. I mean, even before I came out to myself, I didn't really self-identify as gay until I was 16, Um, which, you know, sounds crazy. It sounds idiotic to a lot of people because you're like, how do you not know that you're gay when your folks knew that you were gay? (laughs) You know, how how is it that- Folks always know first, though. How is it that you're not getting the memo from your own mind? But there are a lot of games you can play with yourself to, to- to move those kind of thoughts out of your conscious mind and in deep down into your subconscious. But even when I was a a grade schooler, kids were already calling me fag and faggot and queer. And I was already identified as this before I ever even came close to touching another person in a sexual way. They just knew something about me. And when I finally did come out is when things got really crazy uh, because that made me a target. And in the height of the 80s, at the height of AIDS hysteria, uh, it was it was dangerous to your person, to your to your life to be openly gay for a lot of gay people who were adults, not to mention 16 year old kids. I had people that would call the house and threaten to murder me. I would get. Are you joking? No, not at all. Not at all. Back in the days of the '80s, before what? there was caller ID, you could call somebody anonymously and 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 yeah. s- you know say whatever. You know, we used to do that actually as a f- fun little thing on Friday nights at sleepovers. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, crank calling is is its own thing, but like, but yeah, death no, threats is something. No, else. people would threaten to kill me. People would drive by the apartment that I lived in with my parents. And like throw stuff at the window where I was, where they knew my bedroom was. They would chase me if they, if any, if two or more of my classmates saw me out about in town, 
like at the mall or something, it would become a chase. And I would have to like, I, I learned how to run really fast back then. You wouldn't believe it looking at me now, but oh I <laughs> flew like the wind back then because, because, you know, because there, there were, there was this physical threat because that's what you do with queers is you beat them up, you know? Uh, so it, there's yeah. a very real fear behind why people don't want to be identified this way and why people want Absolutely. are very invested in their masculinity and presenting as masculine because they don't want to deal with that. So yeah. that's and understandable. That's it becomes toxic. It's understandable, but it's toxic as a societal thing. Right. You know, I, it's, it's not, it's not okay. You know, and that's, where over the last several years we've been sort of stepping up as a society and recognizing that these behaviors are not healthy. They're not doing anyone any favors. Um, when it comes to what you just said, you know, for the longest time being gay was, is not okay. The easiest way to tell is if you're effeminate right. and you're just being yourself. And then we've decided we've taught society. These people are different. These people are weird. We need to hate them because they're different. They're weird. And the best way to, to tell, basically put a name tag on yourself, is by you behaving as yourself, which tends, tends to be more effeminate. And therefore, the only way to hide yourself is to just fake it, be more masculine, and maybe you'll survive, you know, like survival technique. It's really sad. Yes. And it's really where a lot of that stuff comes from. And it's, it's, it's about time it changes, honestly. I, you know, it, I'm, I'm hopeful for that. It's... There, there's a lot of, but in the bear community, especially, I think it's kind of a, pro oh, totally. a problematic thing. When I was younger, first coming out in the bear community as like a 20 something, I'll never forget. I was in San Diego. I had just bought my first pair of chaps from the crypt leather store there. And Ooh. I went out to Wolf's, uh, used to be a bar down there, a leather, leather bar and I was having the, the best night ever. I was feeling sexy and I was drinking and having a good time. And I saw this super hot guy that I just, oh my God, he was just, would have made my night absolutely if I could have landed him in, in my hotel room. And so I, you know, <laughs> I, I sent him a drink across the bar and he came over to actually talk to me. And we started talking and we were talking for about five minutes and all of a sudden he stopped me and he said, I'm really sorry. You looked so good until you opened your mouth. Yeah. And I was absolutely crushed. And not only was I crushed to have him say that to me, but it just so happened that there was a lull in the music at the bar at that exact moment that he said no. that. So literally almost everybody sitting around that bar heard what he said to me and I was absolutely crushed by that. And I just kind of, you know, said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And I left. And, you know, me being my, <laughs> me being my emotional self, I was in my car and going back to my hotel in tears, just thinking, good God, uh, that just leveled what a way me. To ruin yeah. You know, I mean, it was what, just, what? it's oh, just, man. this is, this, and this is something that I've heard said about other people and i will be quite honest i'm not immune from having said it myself sure well what's that phrase and i've heard this a few times um you know they were they were good until they opened their mouth and a purse fell out right exactly and who do I've, purses I've belong heard to before. <laughs> purse belong to women right and um and I've, I've heard that so many times um and gays like you know try as we might like it, someone mentioned this recently like when people attack gay people that aren't gay, like the whole gay community surrounds them and protects them. But if you're in the gay community, sometimes we can be really vicious with to each other within it. Absolutely. And that was a great example of that because, man, I know when I first was insecure coming out in the bear community, I definitely would sort of weed guys out that I was on dates with if they presented more feminine in their behaviors, mannerisms, voice. Um, I'll, I'll admit it. I mean, this was like 11 years ago, but still. And, um, you know, it just, it's, but there's it's a way to go. That we were taught to do. There, there's it, a way to go about it's, doing it's, that though, without having to be, you know, without having to be nasty or, or, or mean to somebody, 
you know, right. you, you, he could have just said, you know, I, I appreciate the beer, but you know, you're just not my type. I had heard that before and that didn't phase me. Not being somebody's type is, is nothing I can change, but you know, to be, to be told that, you know, I was good looking up until the point that he heard me talk was just, was, was a lot to, to bear. And I think that yeah. it's, it's something that I've struggled with pretty much ever since then. Um, oh, man. As just because of the way that I sound. I mean, I like listening to myself talk right now. You know, I think. You sound fine. I, yeah, Jeremy, people you're say you. that, but, you. you know, when I hear it played back, there's something about hearing my voice on playback that just makes me cringe and go, ugh, I wish I sounded. I wish I sounded more like Burt Reynolds or, or you know, some other straight guy that I don't even know. <laughs> well, to be fair, statistically, most people don't like hearing their voice and playback. Yeah. But on a, that's just a thing. But the guy thought he was better than you because he was masculine, and that's, right? And so that's, again, and that's where that's I, where it comes from, and that's what you know is so disappointing, uh, because there there's this Mean Girls vibe that runs through this community in a lot of ways and you know i i, I wish that people i i think almost all of us in school at one time or another growing up were excluded in some way or left mm -hmm. out or, oh, yeah. or purposely left behind or purposely made to feel like we didn't belong for whatever reason. If they knew you were gay back then, or if you were just a nerd or you didn't dress well, or you were poor or whatever, for whatever reason. And we all know how that feels and how, how absolutely crushing that is to, to a person to feel like, these people are laughing at you and excluding you on purpose because they don't think you're as good as they are for us to turn around yeah. as adults and pull that same behavior on our own people is just so disheartening to me that we, that we still engage in this behavior instead of, you know, if you don't, you don't, I'm it's not saying you have to like tribal. everybody. Yeah, you don't have to like everybody, yeah. but you don't have to be yeah. a jerk to everybody either. You don't have to be no. nasty. It's a tribal thing. You know, masked men are preferred. Yes, sadly, very whether true. Whether we agree with it or not. So if you are that way, you're already kind of on the top. Tribal thing, you know, if you're toward the top, you know, you want to keep that power. So unfortunately, some people don't exercise that in the best way. And they feel like the only way to maintain that power and status is by putting others down. That's really what it comes from. And that happens regardless of age, sadly. But you're 100% right. Like, as adults, especially those who are, you know, in a subgroup of the world of gay and bears even more, you know, specific than that, we should be better than that. And we should be more cognizant of that. Totally agree with you. Um, I've seen femme bears being treated like shit. And it's it's not okay. It's, you know? it's often the people who have been hurt as kids... Uh, or bullied as kids who then turn around and become the bullies. And we've seen that happen more than once. You know, there's, oh, yeah. they're still hurting on the inside from what happened to them. So in order to make sure that that doesn't happen to them, they're going to do it first, or they're going to find someone that's going to be lower on the totem pole than they are. And, 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 you know, the, the derision and femme shaming and calling someone girl or queen or misgendering them, you know, as an insult it just, it, it's so unnecessary, but it becomes this kind of feeding frenzy, I think, uh, that you see not just in person, but online as well. There, you know, there are people that yeah. will, will say those kind of things about, you know, someone's online photos or, or videos or whatever when they hear them or see them. And it's a shame. Well, yeah, it is. And that actually brings me to something I wanted to ask you about. So I have noticed a change since, you know, even me when I was a kid in high school, which was like 15, 16 years ago, um, to now. And I know that you've been in the community a lot longer. So have you seen changes since that time at the bar, you know, when you were insulted to now, you know, have you noticed, like, I think things are improving personally, but what do you think? Like, have you noticed that things have changed um, over time I, with, in regards to masculinity? I think that there's still, there's more awareness now, I think, of, of the fact that there's not just a black and white 
binary dynamic here when it comes to the way that people present. And I'm still learning about, about non-binaryism and transgenderism and those things. Uh, I think, I think yeah. the, the visibility of transgender people in the last, you know, in the last decade uh, coming up the way they have, I think has done a lot to kind of help educate people towards maybe, you know, being a little bit more sensitive towards other people. Um, but in some ways, you know, social media has, I think, set us back a little bit because it's easy for people to get behind a keyboard and say stuff that's that they wouldn't say in person. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Well, and Jeremy, you you are out there. For those that don't know, Jeremy is um, in memes. He's been in music videos. He's you're pretty well known, Jeremy. So with the good of that, which I think is great. Um, I love supporting you and watching that stuff. Thank you. Um, there's the, there's the flip side of it where because you're exposed to a larger audience, with the good comes the bad. True. You know, with with that, so I, I get it. Very true. And you know, I it I it's one of the things that I had to learn kind of early on when I started gaining notoriety for for various things is that there are always going to be people that are going to make comments and they may. They may be gay people making mean comments as well. And I've learned how to kind of laugh that off and just kind of let it roll off of me for the most part. Every once in a while I'll have a That's day good. I'll have a day where someone, you know, gets through my armor and, and zings me a good one. <laughs> but for the most part, you know, I you know, it's and, and there were people that have said, you know, it's 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 not attractive to see a pansy bear queen. You know those stuff along that line, and it's like, and it's, and I'm like, well, what was Pansy Bear about this effect that you know I was dancing in a small swimsuit? Okay, I can see that because it looks like a bikini, I guess. But other people, simply for the fact that I was dancing, and that's the sad part, is that oh, true. Men should be free to move their bodies, and there are so many men that really want to be able to dance and want to be free to move and and express the joy that comes from being able to dance and feel that they're bound in by worrying that someone's going to look at them dancing and think, you know, that's an effeminate guy or he's gay, even if they're not. Well, that's, yeah. Well, it goes back into just the basic binary thinking of, you know, these things are behaviors for women. These things are behaviors for men. If you do not do the other one, if you do, you're bad, you're wrong, you're stupid. Right. You know, like that's, that's where it comes from. So you dancing? Well, someone may have been taught dancing's for for women only. Right. You in a speedo. You, you know, doing whatever someone taught that. So to them, it's wrong. Like you shouldn't be this way because they were taught. Men only wear board shorts. Only <laughs> Men only wear board shorts. Yeah. Men don't dance in speedos. Men don't. Yeah. Men don't like you know play with their chest or bellies. I don't, whatever. Like these are things that they don't do. Like. Someone taught them these are lines for men, these are lines for women, you don't cross them. That creates the problem. And I, I'm hoping to see in the future, at least for me, that we continue to fight for just more like it's okay to be you type behavior. You know, there's a lot of that that I've been seeing, like be you, do you, you know, be yourself and support that um, because that's going to lead to healthier relationships and less self hate if you can grow up in a society where. You know, your parents aren't going to care if you're a little bit feminine because it, it, it doesn't matter. It's just a part of this person. And whether you're gay or straight doesn't even even relate to that. You know, you're just yourself. I agree. So I agree. And I think I hope that I hope to see that. I, I think that something positive that can come out of this, because I, I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I like masculine men as well. You know, uh, I'm not saying I prefer them, you know, absolutely over an effeminate man because there are some effeminate men out there that that have really really tripped my trigger in all kinds of ways <laughs> absolutely yeah and it, i and, love and it once you look past that it's great yeah and that this you kind of mentioned it earlier i want to bring this up so and i don't know a lot um and i'm you know if i have a friend of mine who is trans who i would invite to talk more about this on my show with yeah him. i'd love to do that um but what have you noticed about trans bears? Um, I'll start first and just say that it's definitely interesting. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk with my friends and they'll kind of ask each other, hey, like if you were 
offered a date by a trans bird, would you take it? Does that matter? You know, it, it definitely brought up some interesting questions, um, especially when you see them. So what do you, what is your take on it? I I am I am very attracted to female to male bears. Nice. Uh, I have found I have found more than one to be absolutely attractive, and and it's a complicated feeling though because trying to figure out because these are people that generally are not going after a reassignment surgery. These are people who are generally choosing to stick to to become right. bears and present as masculine bears, but retain the biology that they were born with as far as their sexual organs are concerned. So what that right. would, what I, what I can only assume that would mean would be that there would be, if, if sex was being had, that there would be an element of possible, I guess, vaginal sex as part of it. And that's not something I've ever done. So I don't, yeah. I don't know how I would deal with that, but I would like to think that there could be a possibility that that might st- you know that, that I could I could possibly someday find somebody that I clicked with and we were able to kind of work through that without me making them feel like it was some great experiment because that's the other thing I don't want them to feel like you know I'm I'm exactly. you know I'm out on safari <laughs> you know yeah they're not a zoo right like, you don't treat people like that. right no, right I, I, I would I you know but but it but it it would be something different for me because. Uh, I, I have never had vaginal sex in my life. And, and I want to say, before I go any further with that, I, I don't like <laughs> using the term, you know, gold star gay or whatever, or, or talking about vaginas as if they are, you know, bad or ew or icky or smelly or Evil whatever. Objects. Because, listen, yeah. if not for vaginas, 99.999% of us would not be here. So, you know, whether <laughs> whether you right. were birthed that way, more than likely that's how, you know, the egg got to the sperm is through that route. So, you know, vaginas are good. <laughs> Other way around, right? But yeah, I got you. <laughs> but but I just I, I um, I've never I've never been to, and this is another side of of presenting as masculine. What a lot of men do, and my yeah. current husband Tom was married to a woman for for about eight years, and because oh, I remember that, yeah, yeah, and it was because yeah. he was afraid of coming out as gay and presenting who he really was that he did that, and he was so miserable that he was considering suicide before he finally made the decision to end the marriage and and become who he really was it makes people really unhappy and and that is of course a very toxic thing as well so i don't you yeah. know I, I i get it why people have done vaginal sex before and there's all kinds of reasons for people having had sex with women when they're gay uh for men having gay men having had sex with women um yeah. it's just never been it's something. a masculine thing yeah yeah it's like oh no i've been with a woman you know. yeah and i just that's, that's just never something that i was able to to you know was ne- i never wanted to and i i didn't feel like it would be honest to do that to somebody like i i just that was just not a, a bridge that i could bring myself to come across but I, as far as as far as transgender bears go i i am all i am here for it i think it's an amazing thing that Right. Uh, and, and honestly, I think that could be really exciting. So I hope at Absolutely. some point in the future I get to meet somebody and have a chance to maybe, you know, see how how uh, how I can broaden my horizons. Horizons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and I, I agree with you. Like, so, I mean, it, it, the context is different, right? Trans, trans men are men. Yes. If you're if you're a man and you're like another man, you are gay. So you are still gay, right? You know it, and and that's why I think it's important that we celebrate these people and we make them included and not feel excluded. I like your example of you know not an experiment. They're not. They're people, right? You know, and I think that's and that's tough because those are individuals that you know are really changing their life and really putting themselves out there. And I think that they need our support and. You know, we we shouldn't, um, and, and even there's some there's some trans individuals too that still are a bit feminine. They just are men, right? So, you know, there's that as well. And I, I think it just again, it goes back to just remembering, like, we need to go forward in time to a time where it's okay to just be yourself, and regardless of whether you're feminine or masculine, 
you're you and as a society we need to let it go that it's wrong to to be feminine as a man like it it, it, it shouldn't matter like you can still be a man regardless of your behaviors true like it's fine. and here's how i think that that the the masculine men of our community really could embody the heroism that is associated with masculinity if they were to use that trait to help lift up other people and i don't just mean you know by being this handsome sexy masculine guy but being protective of other people uh who are not in that in that same arena standing up for people that are being bullied being out and yeah. proud as a masculine gay person without having to demean other gays and, and this is this is something that i've seen passed around the internet for many many years that makes me an absolutely insane and it was this meme that was created by i think it was gaiety.com some some site i don't know what that is it, it was it was like a website and it was this meme that they did where it was like i'm just a guy i don't like drag queens or listening to dance music or i'm not a fashion plate and it listed all these stereotypically effeminate behaviors and said i'm just a dude or i'm just a guy who likes other guys and that's great to be a guy that likes other guys but all of the context and all of the implication that came out of this meme was that that is better than all these other people who like dance music like drag queens like to do dancing like to you know oh. sew or are into fashion or makeup or whatever it is like so for me, I, I would love to see the really uber masculine guys kind of, you know, spreading their big hunky wings and kind of like helping protect some of their brothers and sisters out there who really need that, I gotcha. need that protection. It, it would be such a like, great thing. Yeah. And there's um, some drag queens who present masculine during the day. You know who's really... do bearded drag at night. Yeah, you know and who's... And that's, that's a great way of showing that. Yeah, you know who's really good at that? And I hope I see I hope I hope see her on Drag Race someday. Uh, there's a queen out of Chicago by the name of Lucy Stool who is just oh, absolutely her. gorgeous. Look her up on, on Facebook. Just L-U-C-Y, okay. last name Stool, S-T-O-O-L-E. This is okay. one right on. beautiful, bearish guy who does gorgeous drag. He's friends with the Vixen and several other okay. nice. prominent, yeah. prominent Chicago drag queens. And I think his day is probably on the way now that transgender people have kind of broken through to that show. I'm hoping that will be a sign that maybe one of these days bearded drag can be more than just an episode on on Drag Race. Because yeah. he's... There was one on... Uh, like England, I think there was a bearded drag. Oh yeah, Holland? I forgot one of those. Yeah, there was a bearded drag queen in that one. I think it was Holland. Okay, yeah. I, I think that's yep. I think that's awesome. You know, I, there's nothing wrong with liking drag and and liking drag queens and the art of drag and things that are feminine and makeup and all those things. Like, they just I wish I think more than anything the the bottom line for me is if people could just be. Gosh, this is going to sound so cliche to say. Because it's such a no, it's such yeah. an Ellen thing, and and it's not really positively associated <laughs> with her anymore since we know that she's not really all that kind. But, well, but it's okay. It's being okay. being yeah. kind to other people doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything to nope. to um, wait till you get in the car, you know, with your friends before you know having a giggle about you know that guy that was at the bar that was drunk and you know, femming out all over the place or whatever. People do that. I get it. You know, we all love to have a good trash talk once in a while, and there's nothing wrong with that. The thing that 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 makes it terrible is when we do that in public and publicly shame people for being who they are. That that's what I wish we could step away from. You don't have to sure. you don't have to tell mm -hmm. them to their face that they're not what you want. You don't have to be mean about it if they're if you're if they're hitting on you. You can just be like, I'm sorry you're not my type and move on and, and let them have their dignity and just let them be who they are and continue to exist as they are without tearing them down. Exactly. And I think that goes for all of society, not right. just within gay culture as well. And hopefully like we go to a society where if we're, you know, teasing about someone, it's more of their behavior being drunk and less about the feminine <laughs> 
cleaning <laughs> part. But uh, you, you know what I mean? Like that's because that's the, that's the issue. Like, that could be know, me one of these days. Day. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, so absolutely. So I think, you know, when it comes to toxic masculinity, and this is just going to be for all the listeners out there, you know, what, what we've kind of defined it, Jeremy and I, and again, we're not experts, but this is our opinion is, you know, when you're forcing yourself to be masculine because you think it's going to protect you from, you know, showing that you're gay or think it's like the best way to present yourself, but it's not you. And that's when it becomes toxic. If you are a masculine that, you know, you like trucks and you like doing whatever it is that we find to be masculine, that's who you are, then that's not toxic. That's you being you. Um, but just remember, like, I think it's just best to be yourself. And I agree. Don't fall for toxicity. I would love for people to take away from, from talking about this subject. Men really are, are handicapped by stoicism and by denying our humanity and our emotionalism. You know, when, when you lose somebody and you're hurt, you, you yeah. should express that and you should reach out to people so that they know that you're hurting so you can get some help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help and there's nothing wrong with admitting that you can't handle everything by yourself. It doesn't mean that you're not still a man, that you're not masculine. It for you to actually admit that you need help or you need someone to, to listen to you or someone to let you show their emotions, you know, that's, that's yeah. the most important thing to me. I think is I need people in my life who are real and who are going to share with me and trust me enough that they feel comfortable, that they can let me know how they're really feeling, even if it's something negative or something that's sad. You know, we just need to let yeah. people be able to feel those things uh, because otherwise you're, you're cutting yourself off from the source of support and you're forcing yourself to bottle up those feelings. And that's going to only come out in a bad way down the road. Absolutely. And I think also to add to that, and you mentioned it earlier, if you are in the position to do so, providing yourself as a someone who can give space to those who may need, um, like, you know, available, give yourself, make yourself available to those who may need support. Um, like, for example, if you're a parent and you have an effeminate child, you know, let it, let it, let that be. You don't have to necessarily, like, crush their dreams and teach them this is how a man should be. You're doing this wrong. You know, like letting them be who they are was huge. You just saved them years of therapy. Right. You know, right. With that sort of behavior. Supporting them. So being able to su support. Yeah. So in addition to being able to ask for help, if you're in a position to do so, be a supportive person so that people can feel comfortable coming to you for help is basically what I'm, what I'm saying. And, and even better along those lines too, another way that, that the masculine guys can help out too is, you know, make friends with that with that guy that is queening it up on Drag Race Night at the bar or whatever. Because you know what? You never know. You could find yourself such a good friend, somebody that you really enjoy hanging out with who can talk with you, who might even make you feel like you can let down your guard a little bit and maybe find a little bit of your own uh, inner femininity that you've been repressing all these years. But I mean, some of these people are so such a joy to talk mm -hmm. to. I, I have always found some of the most joyful people in my life have been those who have let go of any inhibition when it comes to themselves uh, as re as regards to their masculinity, they are yeah. out there living as their authentic person. Mm -hmm. They're happy. They're free. They're yeah. they're joyful, and they share their happiness and joy. And they're just yeah. fun to be around. Honestly, yeah. like I, something, yeah. Give me a guy that very attractive about it. <laughs> give me a guy that wants to chit chat and 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 mm -hmm. talk stuff and talk about pop culture and talk about. Even sports, even and I don't even follow sports at all. But you know what? If you can talk about it and make it fun for me or funny for me or whatever, or, you know, show me some sexy stuff in there, like uh, when they changed those uniforms years ago where they made them kind of see through. <laughs> Sure. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> do do something. You know, if if you're passionate about what you like, you know, make me feel that I'm going to be drawn to you like a moth to a flame, honey. <laughs> Absolutely. There's something very attractive about 
being yourself and being authentic and being confident. Absolutely. So I think you're just doing yourself a disservice by hiding that. Right. People, are, people sense it. People sense it. Like, like your friend, you know, well, you're not, sorry, not your friend, your ex-boyfriend, Harold, like you said, he kind of made himself an island. People didn't know probably what to think of him, right? He was probably not very open. No. Like, that stuff is not great um, versus being yourself, being open. You're going to attract the right people. And you're going to be a lot happier in Plus, the long run. If you break down some of the some of the, the walls of, of your own clique, and this this applies not just yeah. to masculinity versus femininity, this applies to uh, people of color in a huge way. We all need to be a little more welcoming to each other, and 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 that includes you know people of color as well as people who may not necessarily fit the masculine most masculine stereotype, like. Open up your 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 ideas and your thoughts and your friendship to people that may not necessarily be exactly like you or into all the exact same stuff that you are. And you could learn a yeah. lot of stuff about people, find things that are common, and find out stuff that you didn't even know. You know, it's never Absolutely. wrong to learn something new. Yeah, if you're just looking at the same, you're not going to learn anything new because you're just repeating the same so. you need to get like the, the soundtrack to we are the world brought in at this point or something <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> hard pass can you get the rights to um, that <laughs> I, i'll work on it actually let's do it Jeremy. use your connections uh, we can do this um well hey jeremy thank you so much for talking with me about this um i i really appreciate it i think you know again i hope to see a future where toxic masculinity is a thing in the past and people can just be themselves and I just want to thank you again for taking a moment and coming on my show with me and, and talking through all of this together. Well, thank you so for thank having you again, me. Jeremy. I appreciate it. And thank you to everybody that took the time to listen to us kind of go on yeah. and on about this. I, like I said before, I, I want to make sure that people know that I'm not here to deride other people for, for being, you know, being who they are, whether it's masculine or feminine, you know, you are who you are and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just something that, that you are and you should be able to express that without bringing someone else down. And that's all I ever want from people. Just, you Absolutely. know, don't Be bring yourself. me down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Jeremy. And thank you everyone for listening to another episode of the Bear Share Show. Um, if you like what you're hearing, please feel free to subscribe and follow the show. You can listen to The Bear Show Show on Spotify, Apple Music, or anywhere else that you listen to your podcast today. And then also feel free to follow The Bear Show Show on Instagram and YouTube. So thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Thank Bye. you.